Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time around I've got something slightly unusual. I'm going through a whole bunch of grindhouse movies that I've found on the shelves and I want to talk about why sometimes it's not a good thing to upgrade to higher media. So you know, obviously you start out with VHS or Betamax if you're afflicted that way. Then you go up to DVD, then you go up to Blu-ray, then you go up to 4K then who knows where you go but for me it's not always necessary to do that it's sometimes okay to have a dvd copy of something there are things that are of a quality and are at a level where upgrading offers no aesthetic value to you so i just thought i'd show you these movies with that in mind I've got them at a certain medium, and I'm quite sanguine with that. I'm happy with just having them in that medium. So I'll start out with something which I do have some of these on Blu-ray, but I've got most of them on DVD. And they're two or three movies to a disc, which is these days a taboo to some people. But it's William Castle Horror Collection, five films by the Master of Horror. Of Fright, sorry, Master of Fright. And the five movies are 13 Ghosts, great movie, I love it. 13 Frightened Girls, which has a slightly creepy vibe about it, but not for horror reasons. Mr. Sardonicus, which I also have on Blu-ray. Homicidal and The Old Dark House. Schlockmeister made low-budget movies, mostly for Columbia, in the 50s and 60s, and just monetized the hell out of him and made himself into a kind of low rent alfred hitchcock of horror now i got the, i got this one because i wanted the old dark house and i wanted 30 frightened girls and i wanted 13 ghosts and this came up quite cheaply i don't need these to all be on 4k i don't need them all to be on blu-ray i'm kind of happy to watch a william castle science fictional horror movie mostly horror movie on dvd on anything I can get it on and even though these are on DVD and even though these aren't going to look fantastically crisp by my Blu-ray player I'm happy to have these movies at all I saw William Castle movies particularly The Tingler which I also have on Blu-ray in on TV I saw it on a shitty old 1960s black and white television anything I watch these movies on after that is an upgrade for me and this is fine you can probably find it really cheaply on eBay. You may even find it on Amazon. But you can pick up these movies in a format that is eminently watchable for not too much money. So keep that in mind when you're talking to size queens who are always on about, well, yes, this has to go on 4K. Otherwise, the whole world needs to kill itself. No. Sometimes these things are good enough. And then we get these ones. And these movies have been upgraded to Blu-ray, I'm sure, at various times. And then you get these old ones, which it says it's released by MGM. Well, you get four movies on one disc DVD resolution. The Man from Planet X, Beyond the Time Barrier, The Time Travelers, and Angry Red Planet. You get all of those on one disc. The resolution isn't fantastic. But again, they're eminently watchable. These are movies that were designed to be watched in drive-in theatres and were then sold on to late-night television back in the cathode ray tube days. So these are eminently watchable on the discs. There are no extras at all. But the quality of the transfers is as good as the technology of these discs allows. And the movies are fun. The Time Travellers is particularly good. The Angry Red Planet is mad. Beyond the Time Barrier and The Man from Planet X are of their time and still eminently watchable. So again, you don't need them on any big format. And there's more of them here too. I've got The Amazing Transparent Man, Reptilicus, and The Animal Man, and The Brain That Wouldn't Die on another one of these. And again, they're all on one disc. This is the ordinary version of The Brain That Wouldn't Die because there is a European version of it where there is some nudity when Jason Evers character goes looking for a new body for his girlfriend who's sitting in a tank and he's just a head in a tank. There is one version of it that I've seen where there is female nudity on one of the women he goes looking for, which for me is a preferred option because because I'm a cishet man. But yeah, um, these ones, still very watchable, still okay to check it out.
Reptilicus, of course, I prefer it wasn't in 4x3 aspect ratio. And if I get the chance to upgrade that one, I will. But the Amazing Transparent Man and the Neanderthal Man, brain that wouldn't die, they're good enough as they are. I would like a version of the brain that wouldn't die that has a lot of, say, video essays about it because it's a movie about which there is a lot to say. But for the most part, they're okay for just watching copies. And we all have that in our collection. If you have a physical media collection, some of the movies you've got are just going to be watching copies. They're not going to be anything that you will brag to your friends about. They're just there for you to be able to check out the movie when you want to and you can't be stuffed booting up Tubi. This one has had an upgrade more recently that I got these. And this, again, is um, a DVD version of it. And I know it's been released, I think it was by Arrow in the UK on Blu-ray. And I know it has also in America. And it's the icon of horrors collection, Sam Katzman. Four classic films on DVD. you got the Giant Claw, classic. The Creature with the Atom Brain, classic. Zombies of Moratau, which is the first horror movie I ever saw. And The Werewolf, which is very ordinary. But there's been a prestige version of these put out recently. By recently, I mean in this century. And they have art cards, they have booklets, they have essays and all that kind of thing. But I'm kind of okay with these ones. And again, you've got two movies. So this is John Claw and The Creature with the Atom Brain there. You have Zombies of Moratau and The Werewolf on that one. And if I did have the infinite money glitch, of course I'd upgrade them. But I don't really need to. If I can just grab off the shelf the Zombies of Moratau and watch it and enjoy Alison Hayes in that movie, I can do it. I don't need it to be in crisp resolution when I hold my nose up against the screen. I just need to have a watchable copy. A movie I saw when I was a very young kid and they gave me nightmares. Oh, bonus there. I, I like the idea of being able to have a copy of that. And I've still got that thing that many of us of a certain age have, where just owning a copy of a movie is still at times something miraculous and wonderful. And that's how I feel about this particular box set. And again, I've got another one. I've got The Vampire, The Bat People, The Screaming Skull, and a version of The Vampire Lovers, which I have on Blu-ray as well, in this four horror set. Again, it's an American one. Again, they're all on one disc. But for a movie like The Vampire or The Bat People, which is a Filipino horror film, a Screaming Skull, which is very ordinary, and of course The Vampire Lovers, I, I love it. I, when I first saw The Vampire Lovers, I was hitting puberty, and it had a profound effect on me. But again, most of the three of these four movies, I don't mind the fact that they're in fairly low res, and but watchable, but not great format. If I want to watch The Vampire of the Bat People or The Screaming Skull, I'll just grab this one. But with The Vampire Lovers, I will go and get the Blu-ray that I've got. But again, the format isn't as important as having a copy of the movie. Then we're getting into another box set of four cult movies which were on two discs in this case. And these ones are 1970s cult movies. They're more grindhouse kind of things. We've got Angels from Hell, The Naked Cage, Savage Island with Linda Blair, and a great movie with Candice Rialson in it called Chatterbox. On two discs, four movies. There's the disc there. Chatterbox is actually an unofficial remake of a French hardcore adult film that Alpha France put out called Le Sex Qui Parle. And it's a, basically the movie is Candice Rialson plays a character who is a beautician whose girl parts start having a mind of their own and expressing it. And the concept's funny. It works. A map of Tasmania gets very, very bossy. And it's got some interesting actors around her. Arlene Martel's in this movie. She was in Demon with a Glass Hand with Robert Culp. And Rip Taylor's in there as well, and Professor Owen Corey, and Sandra Gould, who was the second Mrs. Kravitz in Bewitched. They're all in that movie, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. I watched it the other day, and one of the things I found out about the movie watching it is, whoever was holding the boom mic really needed to be sacked from his job, because the boom mic appears in a number of scenes um, coming down from the top of the screen. But, again... Cult movies, I don't need them on fantastically um, detailed formats. 
I just want to be able to watch them when I'm in the mood for lowbrow, silly 1970s fear like these all were. And here's another one where we've got movies on two to a disc. Arena, Eliminators, America 3000 and The Time Guardian. There you go. On that one, The Time Guardian is an Australian science fiction movie with Tom Burlinson and Kerry Fisher in it. And it's bad. It's bad basically because the production deal that they had to make the movie... As they started production, the people in America who were the money people said, no, we're halving the budget. And it totally went to shit. I watched Eliminators yesterday. It's another movie written by Paul DeMeo and Danny Bilson, who did the early TV series in 1990 of The Flash. And it also made one of my favourite low-budget science fiction movies of the 80s, Zone Troopers. They did that one, and that's a lot of fun. It's got touches of Deathlock the Demolisher in it, it's got time travel, it's got a ninja, it's got a little flying robot, very reminiscent of one of the robots in the black hole, it's got Denise Crosby, it's got Andrew Prine in it, it's got Roy Detrice, it's, um, it's a man little film, and I love it out of all regard to how good it is. It's one of those VHS movies that you love because you watched it on VHS, and having a four pack of that, I would hate to lose this one just because of the fact that it's got these silly movies on it. Arena was in that recent box set of Charles Band movies, which were upgraded into a box that looked like a video store. Cult movies of a certain time don't necessarily need to have them on the best format available to current technology. And then we go to a bit of an extreme with 12 movie collection Savage Cinema, which has 12 movies, and they're in... A very basic format. They're on DVD, of course. Now, I'll get this out. For a start, it comes in a paper cover. Double-sided DVDs. There are two movies on that side. There are two movies on that side. And the tw with the 12 movies, you end up with just three discs to give you 12 movies. And it was always confusing on which side the movies were on. And they sit like that in the case. It's an incredibly basic and cheap way of getting us the movies. And they're bloody hard to put back in. But there are all sorts of things like really obscure movies that wouldn't have got a release beyond this anyway. Things like Best Friends and Burnout, Dangerous Charter, Death Machines, Death Riders, Hellcats, Hell on Wheels, Little Laura and Big John, The Side Hackers, Wild Rebels and Wild Riders, and the first gay bikey movie that wasn't made by Kenneth Anger, a thing called Pink Angels which is a kind of sweet gay comedy in some ways, right up until the end where they totally screw things up with a mean-spirited and nasty ending. You don't need these on any fantastic format. You, they're never going to go onto 4K. They're never even going to go into Blu-ray. They're okay as they are, and they're watchable, and you can use them as a reference point on kind of exploitation cinema of the 1970s. So you don't need them any better than this. And there's lots of these. There's this one too, it says Roger Corman's Cold Classics All Night Marathon. Two discs, four movies again. There they are. And you've got Lady Frankenstein, which is a bit of fun. The Velvet Vampire with Celeste Yarnell. Time Walker and Grotesque. Science fiction and horror combined. They're all not fantastically great. They are, fortunately, three of the four are in a proper cinematic aspect ratio, 1.78 to 1, which is kind of marginal but reasonable. They're good transfers, they're anamorphic transfers, but those movies, two to a disc, it's not too bad, they're watchable, the quality of the discs is, is great. And again, you're getting a whole bunch of cult movies that you can just sit through and eat your chips and drink your beer and, and have a good time with. Um, there are some extras on them too, which surprised me. In The Velvet Vampire, you get an audio commentary with Celeste Yarnell, the star of the movie. The Lady Frankenstein, you get two versions, a theatrical cut and a longer international cut, which means it has more nudity in it. Time Walker, you get an interview with Kevin Brophy and producer Dimitri Villard. So there are a few extras on there, even though they're two to a disc. So these ones punch above their weight as far as extras are concerned. Now the last things I've got for you are things that arrived today and I wanted to let you know they were available and show that again sometimes exploitation movies are a lot of fun in a higher format.
This one I got with some Amazon credit I had. Betty Page in Teaserama and Varieties and also Buxom Beauties. These are burlesque movies from the 1950s. I think they're 54, 55 and 56. Lots and lots of stuff on this. 320 minutes worth of stuff. Um, something weird video. We're working on the production of this. There are tons of extras and commentaries. It's got a slipcase. And again, you've got a reversible cover and you've got these movies on two to a disc because they are in Academy ratio rather than anything wide and cinematic. The quality of the media varies because the original media they got it from varies. And these were movies that were designed to be preserved for history. They were exploitation movies. They were grindhouse movies in the purest sense of the word. And it's only through the wonderfulness of something weird video that we have them at all. And they've been preserved. And now they come out on Blu-ray in a 1920 by 1080 p format. And that's kind of surprising that these ones would come out like that. Betty Page, of course, has an enormous cult following. And there's a little bit of the stuff on the back. And this is like being at a burlesque theatre in the 1950s. You've got comedians like Joey Ross in there and a bunch of other comedians. So you can see burlesque slapstick kind of comedy along with beautiful women not wearing too much. You're not going to get full nudity in these movies, but it's not about that. It's about capturing a moment that didn't get captured any other way. And I'm glad I got this today. And I'm going to watch it and enjoy it and just accept it for what it is. The other thing I got, which is the PS de Resistance, Michael Powell's Peeping Tom on 4K. I've been waiting on this one. I got it from JB Hi-Fi. I've been waiting on it being released because the original DVD transfer of Peeping Tom I have, the quality of the original medium from which the transfer was burnt wasn't great. It wasn't in a decent aspect ratio. It didn't honour the work that Michael Powell put into the movie, which some people say killed his career. Because suddenly, Michael Powell, who people knew for all of these high-minded, slightly artsy films, I Know Where I'm Going, and A Matter of Life and Death, and all those other ones, Life and Death, The Colonel Blimp, suddenly he comes out with something that's much harder than Psycho in many ways. And it made it about the same time. And the British critics shat themselves about this movie. They really went off their nut. Not necessarily killed, but it altered the career of Michael Powell in a lot of ways. But it was a precursor to a genre that still exists to this day. It's great. There are tons of extra features on it. There you go. Check those out. You can pause. And this is a movie of quality enough that I'm happy to pay the premium to get a 4K of it. My blue, my DVD copy of it was watchable, but it wasn't great. And I knew it wasn't great because you could tell by the artifact here on the sides and all sorts of other little hints that it's, that it's not the best delivery system for the movie. But now I've got the 4K. And I don't always buy 4Ks. But I kind of filter, but I do filter which movies I'm going to buy in 4K because money is limited for me, like for everybody else. And this one makes me extremely happy. It's an important film. It's a confronting film, and it's brilliantly made. This is the exception that proves the rule that format doesn't matter. All those other movies that I've shown you, right up to and including varieties, the format doesn't matter as much. But with this one and with it being Michael Powell, the format for me matters. And the extras are worth it. And the fact that getting it wasn't tremendously expensive. Older movies coming out on 4K are sometimes crazy cheap. And that's weird because you'll get a really shitty new movie, which is going to be forgotten next Wednesday. And it gets a 4K release. And for a little while, all the fanboys rave about it and then suddenly it's gone this one stood the test of time and it's worth having there is a blu-ray version of this as well and if you don't have a 4k play why get it but if you can afford to get peeping tom on anything above the old dvd release i highly recommend you do so so on that note of optimism and love of cinema
that's it for this time around so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video please like subscribe hit the notification bell leave me a comment and let me know what you think of these movies and what you think about getting a movie in a watchable format without necessarily being a size queen who needs to have everything on blu-ray i think there's an argument for not doing that and you also have that serendipitous thing of looking in secondhand shops and finding copies of movies that are watchable but you don't want to pay too much for them you can also support the channel by becoming a channel member or by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash terry talks movies i'm working on my second video which is going to be delivered to the patreon people showing something interesting around my neighborhood and just waffling away while i drive the car around that second video is going to go up later this week for the patrons and then a month later i'm going to be putting them up on the main channel if you want to just see what i do and see where i live become a patron and you get access to that video a month before the people on the main channel do so next up we've got science fiction saturday there's a plethora of things i can talk about on that but until then watch some good movies watch some bad movies stay cool if you're up in the north stay warm if you're down here because it's bloody freezing at the moment and i'll catch you next time